New Clause 4 suggests a new scrutiny process for all FTAs. It will still be the executive that negotiates FTAs, but Parliament would get a yes-no vote on the negotiating objectives, and importantly, also on the final draft agreement, as happens in the US and Japan. Not only has this not ended up in the bill, but the government's position has seemingly reverted to having less scrutiny than we did as a member of the EU. There is widespread recognition across society that parliamentary scrutiny is essential in international trade agreements. The Honourable Member for Huntingdon and his colleagues deserve the credit for their sterling efforts to build a consensus. Their new Clause 4 has many of the elements of good scrutiny practice which a modern, confident, outward-looking country would want to adopt. Isn't it ironic that we are in the middle of trade talks with the United States where they have full scrutiny? This. Food standards are a very huge concern to my constituents as well. They are deeply worried that decades of progress in animal welfare, hygiene, husbandry and environmental management are going to be stripped away. Farmers and consumers will be worse off. And, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, by talking to the issue of of climate change and the fact that all of our um, policy arrangements going forward need to be aligned to the essential fact of meeting uh, or or not exceeding the threshold of 1.5 degrees. This year, 2020, is on course to be the warmest ever. Aligning trade policy with environmental and climate objectives is not just something that will be good to do. It would be reckless and perilous to do anything else. And yet, despite the hype of a brave new post-Brexit world, this trade bill perpetuates the status quo. It is totally unfit for purpose. From the point of view of standards, from the point of view of democratic scrutiny, from the point of view of secret courts that can also undermine uh, the kinds of values that we want enshrined in trade bills. These last few months, the NHS and its staff, along with other key workers, have been all that have stood between Britain and complete devastation. They have given their energy, their health and even, in some cases, their lives. Rather than thanking them with applause and praise, let's start with a trade bill that ensures the NHS is off the table. We also need to ensure that both public health and social care data relating to UK citizens are protected. Research concluded by Global Justice Now states that the United States wants its companies to have unrestricted access to UK data, including NHS health records. The value of this health data is estimated at around £10 billion a year. We were told during the Agriculture Bill that the proper place for provisions on the quality of imported food would be the Trade Bill. And here we are at the Trade Bill, and the Government is intent on throwing those safeguards out of the window rather than enshrining them in legislation. Those are actions in bad faith, and they shouldn't be allowed. Perhaps the Government thinks that the public are not interested in trade negotiations, or that they are willing to take, just take the Government's word that the NHS will be protected and workers' rights will not be undermined in the future. I can confirm the public are indeed interested and will not be willing to accept any lowering the standards in future.